few hours, the Senate will vote on whether to advance the Republicans' police reform bill, which Senate Democrats are poised to block. There are various disagreements between both bills uh, and including on the issue of qualified immunity, which shields police officers from lawsuits. Some of the other differences including uh, include no-knock raids, also whether to outright ban chokeholds. Now, my next guest uh, has focused in on that issue of qualified immunity. Joining me now is Republican Senator Mike Braun of Indiana. Senator, thanks so much for being with us. I think the discussion about qualified immunity is so important, and you're leading on it. So I want to delve into it if I can right now. Right now, the law of qualified immunity means you can't sue a police officer unless you can prove that he or she violated a clearly established constitutional right. What does that mean, clearly established, and why do you think that standard is too high? So when the law was crafted back in 1871, there was no concept of qualified immunity. That's happened through judicial review, the court systems from the 60s to the present. And it's gotten, yes, to the point where any organization has to have transparency and accountability. What makes it tricky here is law enforcement, law and order is so important in this country and it's now being stigmatized by these instances of George Floyd, Rayshard Brooks, Breonna Taylor. So in law enforcement's own best interest, I think you need to find a way to get that basic accountability that all other entities live with so you can do your job and not have the stigmatizing that's occurring currently with not accepting some accountability. This is where the rubber's gonna meet the road in terms of real reform, and it's always tough to accept by any organization. I'm gonna be talking to the uh, state police in Indiana and the Sheriff's Association later today and say, hey, try to sit, find ways to fix it from within. Maybe we won't need to do anything here, but I think this is a moment in time where it's been uh, raised to a crescendo that something needs to happen. Just so to make it, just that's to make where it, we're at. To make it crystal clear, you yeah. want to lower the standard to make it easier to sue police in certain instances, correct? But I want to make sure that the egregious situations that occasionally arise, that's not the general, that's the exception in terms of what we're dealing with, and to where you tweak qualified immunity. No one is interested in eliminating it on the Republican side. The Democrats want to do that. That's ironic because they've probably been tighter with police unions over the years. So what we're trying to do is help law enforcement live through this stretch of where bad actors, the very few, are hurting their organization in total. So straddle, it's a careful one to eliminate frivolous lawsuits, but allow redress in these egregious cases. What's your message to some Republicans who say this is a poison pill, that changing qualified immunity all is a bridge too far? All I can tell you in 37 years of being a CEO of a company, there are always parallels that I can use in this new job. If you kick the can down the road, you've got something inherently wrong at a division, a location, and you think it's gonna fix itself on its own, hardly ever happens. And this is like defense. I think it's one of the most important mm -hmm. things we do here in the federal government, but I don't hold it sacrosanct either when it comes mm -hmm. to budget issues. So you've always got uh, within whatever you believe in strongly ways that you can make it better. And I think this moment is here now for law enforcement. All right. The flip side of this is that Republican Senator Tim Scott has a bill yeah. and we don't know where it's going to go. There will be a vote today. Democrats are promising to block it. They say it is not salvageable because there are differences uh, on qualified immunity. There are differences on no knock uh, seizures and entrances. And there are differences on chokeholds as well. What's your reaction to Democrats who say it's not salvageable? Well, I think that's because they want to at least do something on qualified immunity. They want to eliminate it. I've talked to enough Democrats. If we had the process, which we don't normally have here, uh, that's easy to amend and debate, I think we'd arrive at a place where my bill would be the landing spot when there's very few people wanting to do it now, it might be the way you'd get seven Democratic votes 
on Tim Scott's bill. I'm a sponsor of it. I'm going to vote to proceed on it. But if we do not get seven Democrats, uh, it's going to die. And then again, we're here in the lurch. Uh, this has risen to a, a high crescendo here. And I think uh, the American public, as well as law enforcement, might be disappointed that we don't take the opportunity. You talk about Democrats coming your way. Do you yep. feel Republicans need to give some to here? And I think that is where Republicans would have to see reforming, tweaking qualified immunity would be the linchpin of actually getting something done. Otherwise, what Tim has got in his bill is similar to what the Democrats have in their bill, too. But it doesn't address the three issues you talked about. No knock entries, qualified immunity and chokeholds and qualified immunity is probably where if you want to pick one of the three, you modify it, make it palatable. Don't go overboard in how you tweak it. That'd be the place we could land. Uh, Senator, we're in such an important moment on race in this country right now, which is why I do think it's important to ask about something the president continues to say and said last night. I don't want to play it because it's frankly offensive. Uh, particularly to the Asian American community, but he refers to the coronavirus repeatedly as the Kung flu. I hate even saying it myself. As a leader, uh, as a Republican leader, um, as a citizen, do you condone that kind of language? No, I don't. Um, but I also know that uh, President Trump arrived with his own particular style. And remember, he was the embodiment of frustration with what preceded him. So uh, I believe in so many of the things that we've done policy wise, but you've also got to make sure in how you deliver your message that it brings more into your way of thinking, maybe than turning them away. And uh, everyone has his or her own individual style. Uh, I would take a different approach. Yeah, I guess the question though isn't whether it works, is whether it's right. And I don't, you know, I would not use that uh, terminology myself, but uh, President Trump uh, has his own way of communicating, and I don't think that's going to change. And uh, in this case, I think it's probably not going to bring more people over to what I think has worked pretty well policy-wise. Senator Mike Braun, I really appreciate you being with us, having this important policy discussion this morning. Come back. You, you bet.